Hey everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. I hope that you guys have had a great day. Huh? If you tuned in to my uh, video announcement this morning, you probably are aware of the fact that I haven't had the greatest of days, but I am grateful uh, to be alive. Uh, this morning I made the announcement that I have temporary shut down programs and services for the Odyssey Project that include Black Men Lead, um, Music is Life, uh, the uh, Black Community Empowerment Initiative, uh, mental health uh, resources and wraparound sources for both men and women, domestic violence uh, resources for both uh, male and female, uh, all have been shut down temporarily simply due to a lack of funding. I can no longer carry the burden of doing it on my own. Uh, it's not fair to me or my family and the things that I need to do as a business owner. Robin Peter to pay Paul uh, when Paul doesn't have the capacity to ever pay Peter back isn't the way things need to be handled and I had to do that. Um, this could be very temporary if, I mean, the slightest bit of support uh, presents itself and I can get confidence that at some point there will be pockets of relief. Uh, like I said, uh, the initial uh, suspen suspension of services is just through the weekend uh, with hopes that we raise money. I've been talking about a fundraiser for God knows how long and I announced what that amount what we had raised over the course of this year, which is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, especially with the amount of people who say they believe in what I do and believe in the work I've done for decades, literally. Um, this isn't me complaining. This is me stating uh, facts and just letting you know, hey, this is uh, where my head is at. I have to be better at what I do in decision making. I can no longer allow my heart to sink my vision my, and everything else. And... Uh, I'll get it figured out eventually, but at this point in time, uh, it's temporary. If we don't raise uh, $5,000 by the end of Saturday, uh, I will extend the suspension throughout the remainder of the year. I have no other choices. There's too much going on business-wise in, in other areas for me to pull from that right now. There's too much going on and I can't do it. So that uh, is it's scary to me. Number one is, and, 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 for, and those who know me know how devastating this is for me. Those who know me know that that messed me up to have to do that this morning because this is what I've lived for. This is what I fight for. Working with these kids is everything. But it doesn't come for me. And it comes at a, at, at a pretty significant price, actually. I've never complained about it. I talked about it. I gave everybody time, I took a chance and opportunity to be a part of what's going on. Uh, that's not a day people that people aren't being brought to me that don't show up in my inbox, show up in my text messages uh, that need the services. And I've always come through. I can't do it and not be, I can't do it and be what I need to be to everybody that's depending on me and all my business and what I do, especially my family. And I, I shouldn't have to. I put in thousands upon thousands of hours of work uh, in research, in program development, in direct engagement, in computer community involvement. I've been everywhere you can imagine. I've done advocacy for kids in special education programs. I've gone to battle with school districts, including Charlotte, Charlotte Mecklenburg, um, HISD, Dallas ISD, a bunch of others. and. I, I mean, and it is what it is. I've, I've, I'm, I'm writing, I'm written, I've written, and I'm still writing my legacy. Uh, but this is just simply a, a good business decision, and I brought teams on that are going to hold me accountable, so that I can't put my heart. But I mean, this is so obvious to me. With so much on the line uh, across the board, this is just where we are. And again, uh, the five thousand I'm talking about raising over the weekend isn't even close to what it takes to run the organization uh and like i said uh, you know you know there was a couple of people that were talking about my lifestyle as if they know my lifestyle i go out of my way to keep my lifestyle out of people's face 
so nobody knows jack about my lifestyle but the lifestyle i live i provide uh, for me my family my kids who are with me or not with me I, I i i do that and i can guarantee you it's not for money being reared for anything I, in donations total this year 600 and i, I said it with this morning it was a 609 or 690 dollars this year so nobody's supporting my lifestyle but me uh which i thought was kind of crazy with all the things you can go online and literally google me and see i've done any money that may have come my way i've actually earned but here's the thing outside of the devastation of just having your baby be put to rest even when it's temporary that, that's devastating to me because I, I actually care. I've done it when it wasn't anything in it. I've done it when it wasn't anything in it for a long time. I've done it when I was the one putting things in it to make it keep going. And it's, it's something I'm passionate about. Here's the problem. With everything I was doing, kids were falling through the cracks like crazy. What do you think happens now when it's shut down? No resources. The people who are coming to me, the people who are being connected and, and resourced into the things they need. You think they fall into the cracks right now? Absolutely. And my thing is, you don't have to support me. Nobody owes me jack shit. But for people who always talk about black power and black love, black unity, all the stuff that everybody's on social media ranting and raving about there are too many organizations that are actually putting in work that cannot get the funding they need for the need. Now, I always told them, have you tried this? Can you get a grant here? And, and my thing is, the grants that I, the grant writers and the organizations I work with to supply what I do is still fractions of what it takes to do it, and I still get it done. I got uh, an organization I'm going to be working with toward the end of the year, and there's grant money coming in, but it's going to amount to roughly a thousand dollars per child per year. How far is that going to get these kids when they need intensive therapy? It's going to land on me, and I agreed to it because that's the passion that I have for it. But 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 what about the kids who don't have it? What about the parents who can't afford it? What about uh, the fact that we got a spike in? Uh, male suicide, a 49% spike in six years in suicide among black males between the ages of 14 and 24. We have an increase in suicide am amongst our babies. Uh, little girls, 5 to 13, lead uh, in that statistical category. We, as a black people, have for years swore up and down we don't kill ourselves, but our babies are. Our young black males are. Uh, Bryce Gowdy, was so overwhelmed by the situation he and his mom and his family was in that he had finally received his way out. He was on his way to Georgia Tech to play football as a, as a, as a, as a lead recruit, full scholarship, everything. But he couldn't stand the idea of leaving his mom behind. He stepped in front of a train. His cousin, who is down in South Florida, uh, Dr. Blanchard, uh, checked on him for me because they were, he was brought to me because they were afraid he was on the same path. And I sent Dr. Blanchard down there to check with his mom and make sure everything was okay. This is real. And we can sit up and talk about it and play with it as it's, it's numbers behind. Every last one of those numbers is a human heart, a human mind, a human brain, a human life. Someone who is capable of doing something exceptional, but in a bad situation. And how we deal with them, how we love them, how we provide for them, how we work with them is going to change. I have a friend, a brother, who was a little younger than me, went to the same high school, had the same teachers who influenced us. And he's doing unbelievably remarkable work. But he said something that was really interesting. He says, we got to be real careful that we don't allow uh, the children we're trying to save to strike fear in us. In other words, that we can't save them from a position of fear. But we got a bunch of people out here that's afraid to go in that hood, afraid to do work. But, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a good conversation, conversational piece. But at the end of the day, I can't get in here.
I'm gonna have to call him. Uh, but anyway, uh, anyway, look, I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna finish this real briefly. Look, you have to be good with you. You don't have to be good with me. You don't have to do jack for me. You don't have to support anything I do. But you have to live with who you say you are. See, anybody can Google Rick Wallace, PhD, Dr. Rick Wallace, and see Rick Wallace has been everything he said he is. Uh, I'm not perfect. I've made some mistakes. I've got things, you know, that I wish I can go back and change in my life. Most of it behind me, way behind me. But, hey, it is what it is. But what I can tell you is I wake up every day and I go hard in the paint to love to be a positive force in this world. I go hard in the paint to be a force of positivity, both in my business and the work I do in the community. I have consistently given our people major, massive breaks, even in my business, that my people have been telling me, we can't afford to keep doing this. We can't afford to keep doing this. I'm trying not to turn anybody away. All that stuff and at the end of the day, I'll end up just like so many of our elders and ancestors who ended the road that they had where they were champions and giants in what they gave us and died alone and broke because we simply don't know how to love on the people who are doing the work. We don't know how to stand behind the people who are doing the work. We don't know how to be a part and give. We, we, and it's amazing how many resources people can come up with to tell you about when they're standing there. Man, if you got $50 in your pocket, give me a dollar. Don't tell me where I can go get a dollar. Give me a dollar. That's how I do. I don't ask anybody to do something for somebody. I don't send them anywhere else. If they come to me, I'm going to give what I can and with, without putting myself in harm's way based off of the need that I see. And then if they need more, then I'll try to help. But I'm never going to sit up and misdirect somebody and I not touch them. And so all the ideas, and, and trust me, there's not a whole lot that I haven't tried. There are certain things I'm not going to do. I'm not involved in the government in my situation when I know the government has never had my people, bet, people's best interests at heart. I'm not going to do that. That just doesn't make sense to me. And I've seen too many people get caught up in that and get pinched. Uh, I, and plus, I'm not going to have somebody tell me what I can and I cannot do. I know what works. I put the work in. I've done the research. I've done all that. So, in essence, my appeal is if you really, truly believe in the work I do, I need you right now. L let's call it what it is. I need you right now. More importantly, the people that I've actually been touching need you. You might not even like me, but if I'm doing the work, if I'm putting in the work, and you know by what I've presented to you that I know what I'm doing, and you believe in it, then I need you. If you don't believe in me, and you've been hanging around for eight, because some of y'all been around eight or nine years, y'all. if you don't believe in me, why are you here? Uh, I told you in the beginning, I'm not here to be liked. I'm not here for shares. I'm not here for sensationalism. I don't need pats on the back. I don't need my ego stroke. I know who I am. So I don't need it. I'm here to put in work. I'm here to be a force and a source of truth. I'm here to make a difference. I'm here to say, hey, there's something we can do and be a catalyst for change. That's why I'm here. So I'm not worried about who gets pissed off with me. I'm not worried about who likes me. Does You don't have to like me, but if you see I'm doing what needs to be done, you ought to want to get behind it anyway. That's another thing. We got to get out of our emotions. We got to get out of our emotions. But anyway, look, I need to grab this and, and get out of here and get to the cigar shop. But uh, look, I really and truly hope that we are able to do something about this. Something that changes the trajectory that we're headed in right now because um, if we don't get any type of funding this weekend and I shut it down for the rest of the year. That's the holidays that a lot of people are going to get hit the hardest and they do. Um, and it's simply beyond, beyond me. And 
I am not okay with it, but at the same time, I understand what has to be done. Um, the thing is, you get all of the people weighing in and nobody giving. Everybody, we, we live in a world where everybody's expecting the next person to do it. Nobody's saying, okay, buck stops with me. That's why we can't get leadership in the community because every man is expecting the next man to do it. That's why we can't get a code of conduct and every man is expecting the next man to do it. Nobody's sitting up saying, not on my watch. I'm going to do something about this. We can't afford to allow this to happen. We can't afford to allow that to happen. Why are we sitting over here not doing something about this? That's why the people I do work with, I trust with my life. Because we are out there actually doing it. And thank God for Dr. Uh, Michael Blanchard because it may have, this day may have been here a lot sooner if it hadn't been for him. Uh, not him just reaching in his pocketbook. But the fact that he did it and, and the friendship that we created and the fact that you know he he like dude they the world we we need you you can't you can't buy out now what can i do to keep you keep you keep you keep you keep you here my thing is i'm not trying to hold anybody hostage for anything whenever i can do something i'm going to do it but what i'm not going to do is sink me and my family and my business vision to do it not when it should be the responsibility of the collective to join in and aid me I, I'm, I'm that's where i'm at the things that we can't get behind blows my mind the things that we refuse to get behind are the things we really need to be invested in and that's been our story and that's one of the reasons why we are always where we are and we want to change that we're going to, have to change how we think and how we approach things and how we work together on that note, I'm going to get out of here. If you want to show some love, if you want to be a part of turning this thing around, the uh, information you need to give is in the description box. Uh, if, if For those of you who are wondering, well, what if I give and we don't hit the mark? Uh, I'm going to do everything I can to save it. Just do the best to get us that. But if not, any money given is going to be allocated to the people on the wait list. Everybody that comes to me is from 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 the moment I said what I said this morning. Everybody was put on the wait list based on the time that they came uh, to the organization. That money will go to the first person, second person, depending on how much it is to handle whatever need it is that we are addressing with them. And we'll do it on a one on one basis. It's not going to be a whole lot uh, that can be done that way, but that's the way it's going to be done. So. Uh, it is what it is, but I tell you what, the last thing our boys need is to fall through the crack. We've lost so many of them already. On that note, look, uh, I'm gonna get out, go do what I gotta do and get get out of here and go where I need to go. All right, now.